in one of your calculus courses, you have already learned to work with vectors in R2 and R3. In linear algebra, the concept of vectors and the operations with them are extended to vectors with more than three entries. We can use vectors to describe linear systems, for example. Until now, you have looked at linear systems containing, for example, three equations in two unknowns. Have a look at the linear system on the right and the equation with vectors on the left. You have enough knowledge about vectors in R3 to show that these are equivalent. You can do this in the following manner. Let us start with the equation with vectors. Using the definitions of scalar multiplication and vector addition, we can rewrite the equation to this new equation, which states that the vector on the left should be equal to the vector on the right. For this to be true, all entries of the vector should be equal. This results in precisely the three equations of the linear system on the right. You can also start with the linear system on the right and rewrite this to the equation with the vectors on the left by reversing the steps we took earlier. Try to do this for yourself. The equation with the vectors on the left is an example of a vector equation. And you have seen that the linear system with three equations is equivalent to a vector equation with vectors from R3. Can you conclude the same for a linear system of more than three equations? Of course you can. But to be able to do this, we need to extend our concept of vectors. In linear algebra, a vector can have any finite number of entries. If a vector v has n entries, you can write this as a column with the numbers v1, v2, and so on, until you reach the last number, vn. If you take all vectors with n entries, we get a set called rn. So if you say a vector v is in rn, you know that v has n entries. Now assume you have two vectors, u and v, both in rn. Just as for two or three entries, u and v are equal if and only if all entries are equal. There also exists a special vector in rn whose entries are all zero. This vector is called the zero vector. Now take two vectors, u and v, both in rn. You could add these vectors to form the vector u plus v. You do this by adding each entry separately and you call this operation vector addition. As an example, let us add two vectors from R4. Take u as 1, 2, 3, 4 and v as 2, 3, 4, 5. The sum of u and v is now 3, 5, 7, 9. You can also multiply a vector u by a scalar c, which is called scalar multiplication. Remember that the scalar is just a single number. The scalar multiple of u by c is the vector cu, where each entry of u has been multiplied by c. As an example, let us multiply a vector from r4 and the scalar. Take u as 1, 2, 3, 4 and c as 3. The scalar product of u by c is now 3, 6, 9, 12. In one of your calculus courses, you may have seen this list of 8 properties. Turns out, they are also valid in Rn, so you are allowed to use these properties in calculation with vectors in Rn. Isn't that convenient? Let us revisit the question we posed at the beginning of the video. Can we write a linear system with more than three equations as a vector equation and vice versa? Let me first tell you what a vector equation is. A vector equation is an equation of the form x1 times a1 plus x2 times a2 and so on until xn times an is equal to a vector b where all vectors are from Rm. As an example, take a look at this vector equation with vectors from R5. Again, we can use scalar multiplication and vector addition to write the vector equation like this. Now the two vectors from R5 can only be equal if all entries are equal, which results in this linear system with five equations 
and three unknowns. You can even take things a little bit further. When you want to solve the vector equation on the left, you can rewrite it to the linear system on the right. This linear system you can solve by writing the augmented matrix and using elementary row operations. As the linear system and the vector equation are equivalent, the solutions of the linear system are also the solutions of the vector equation. So you can even solve vector equations now. The theorem on this slide gives you a nice and short summary of what you have seen in this video. Now you know what a vector equation is, it is time to interpret vector equations. This can be done by considering linear combinations of vectors, but what that is, you will learn at another moment. See you next time!